plan a mission in the office app. We need to select on add new mission under the missions widget. We need to create a name. We can add in objectives for the mission. I can create a new mission location, or if it's a regular location that we use for training purposes, I can select from previously saved locations. We'll type in an address. Just zoom out of the map feature, you'll notice that there are some overlays. In our overlays, we do have airspace displayed. We do have two options. We can view either through the map view, which is what we can currently see, or we can change across to satellite view. In the satellite view, we will be able to see if there are any potential hazards that could impact on your mission. Now we have our area selector at each point of the intended location that you will be flying. Just left click and on your final point, left click twice. Select done. That is now our location that we intend to conduct training and we can name the location accordingly. Now we will select the mission type. We'll be training. Mission workflow. We will be conducting a REPL practical assessment, therefore we'll be selecting our standard REOC mission workflow. This will now pull information from our primary authority, which is operating under our company REOC. We need to select craft. If you intend to fly with multiple aircraft, you can add additional craft to the mission. I will select remote pilot in command to be the instructor. And I can add additional crew. So these may be the trainee remote pilots. And as they would be individually invited into the training organization, I will be able to select each of the individuals by name in the drop down option here. If there are any notes pertinent to the crew, I can add them into here and they will be viewable in the field app. Now we have time zones and information. When planning, we need to refer to NOTAM and TAF, which is why this information is also displayed in UTC. Plan a mission for tomorrow, 8 a.m. We intend to fly for three hours. Time of day, visual line of sight. We do not anticipate exceeding 200 feet. Emergency contacts, radio frequencies, following your standard operating procedures and the operations manual of your REOC. We do have an additional feature here where you can upload any additional documentation and any file type. Now we'll proceed to our JSA. In our JSA, we have a series of questions that we need to go through. Once each of these have been selected, it will allow us to proceed by completing our JSA. Now, if I was to select one of these options, we can see that there's a warning message, which is requesting that we use the risk control form to mitigate the risk. Below, we have a risk assessment form, which displays consequence and likelihood of the risk. We also have a risk rating table, which we can use as a guide. So because I have one risk, I will use the risk control form. If I had multiple risks, I can add additional entries. So if my likelihood is to be possible, and the consequence is a rating of three. On the risk rating table, as a guide, it will display as a high risk, and therefore, I will need to mitigate that risk. So if the likelihood after adding additional crew, 
is now unlikely and the consequence value is now low. It's a minor injury. After adding in my risk mitigation strategy, the risk rating is now a three. Now that my JSA has been completed, I can submit this mission for approval by the Chief Remote Pilot. In my Chief Remote Pilot view, I'll be able to view a mission that has come through request and approval by selecting on the approvals widget, or I can also view in the missions. So I can see that there has been a request here test mission X, and the approval status is pending. So I'll select into the mission. I can view the mission details. I can communicate to the remote pilot. The remote pilot will receive an email notification that they've received the message, and that will be viewable through the field app. I can look into the JSA and I can see the responses. If there was risk, I can also see the risk assessment. I have an approval checklist for myself as Chief Remote Pilot to check on the airspace. Now it has been unlocked, I can approve. I can also make a condition for the Remote Pilot, which be displayed as an acknowledgement. Now we can see that the mission is ready to a fly and it has been approved. So I'm back in the view of the instructor who requested the mission. I can see that it has the status of ready to fly. So now we will switch between our office app onto our field app.